Wondering how to create a confusion matrix using Python using the sklearn library? You've come to the right place. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create the confusion matrix. Not only one method, but two methods. Why two methods? The first method is going to get deprecated and hence you need to know the second method of plotting a confusion matrix. But before we go there, hey problem solvers, my name is Kunal Naik. I am the founder of Data Science Masterminds. I am on a mission to help you learn and apply data science effectively so that you can quickly grow in your career. So do me a favor by subscribing to my channel and hitting the bell notification button so that you get notified whenever I release an awesome smart trick like this one. Also, if you like my work, please feel free to share it with your friends and colleagues so that they can accelerate their journey. You can also contribute to my mission by hitting the super thanks button and helping me continue this journey so that others like you can learn and apply data science effectively to grow in their career. So let's get started. To create the confusion matrix, we are going to be using the heart disease Cleveland UCI data set. In this particular data, we have to classify whether somebody has a heart disease or not. If somebody does not have a heart disease condition, then it's going to be denoted as zero. If they have a heart condition, then it's going to be denoted as one. The aim of the confusion matrix is to get the combinations of the actual class and predicted class and see how many of them we actually got right or wrong. Whatever the case is, all of that is summarized within this confusion matrix. So if you look at this confusion matrix, it's going to be looking something like this, where you have the actual class on one side, zero and one, predicted class zero and one. Now anything that is zero, that is actually it was zero and we predicted zero, it's going to be true negative. And this is the good thing. Similarly, if it's one and we predicted one, it's going to be the true positive. Apart from that, any other condition. So if it is zero and we predicted one, it's going to be false negative. And here it was actually one and we predicted zero, then it's going to be a false positive. And so this way, this confusion matrix will be built and you'll be able to interpret a lot of things on top of this. In this video, we're just going to focus how to plot this confusion matrix. I'm going to make another video on the interpretation of it. So do watch out for that. Also, I made another video on how to do the same thing on Excel. I'll place the link somewhere here or in the description section below and you'll be able to get a more visual way of creating the same matrix. The first method is going to be plot confusion matrix. Now this is going to be deprecated. Nonetheless, I'm just going to still show it to you how it works. And then I'm going to show you the method that you should implement within your own code. We'll begin by importing the libraries. Now we're going to import NumPy and Pandas. Then we are going to take SQLR metrics plot confusion matrix. Now remember, this is the deprecated one. However, within the same matrix library, we have confusion matrix and confusion matrix display. These are the two that we're going to be using in the second method. Then we're going to be using the logistic regression model for doing a sample model and then making predictions out of it. And so this is going to help us just create the confusion matrix. Also, we're going to do the trend test partition using the model selection trend test split. And we're going to create the confusion matrix on the test data. That means we're going to build the model, make predictions. And on the test data is where we'll com compute the confusion matrix. Now this one will just give us the path of where this data set is present on Kaggle. Yes. Now, if you want to use this and run this code along with me, you can click on this Kaggle link, click on the edit button, which is going to be on the top right corner here. And then you can follow along with me with this particular code. For that, you should have a Kaggle account, of course. Let's run the code to import the libraries. Next, we're going to begin by importing the data. Now I'm going to run the code to import the data. And if I run this, and this is just the top five rows of this data. So you'll have age, sex, CP, and rest of the features along with condition. Now this is something that we are modeling against, and this is what we'll be creating the confusion matrix on. Next, we'll partition the data into X and Y. So we're going to take condition in the y variable and then in the x variable you're going to take everything else apart from condition so if i run this code you should be able to see all the x variables here you'll see that condition is missing here next we're going to partition the data into train and test so we're going to take x and y and we're going to split it into x train x test y train y test we have used all the default parameters here except for random shit we just want to keep things consistent. So we have used a random state is equal to zero. Now let me run this code. Now we have two partitions, the train data and the test data. Next, we'll build the logistic regression model and we're going to create an instance first. And I'm going to give max iteration is equal to thousand. 
because sometimes it needs to converge and do some good number of iterations before it can get or fit the model. And we want to say random state is equal to 42 here, just to ensure we can replicate these results. So let's run this one first and then fit the model. Now the logistic regression model is fit which means we have a model that we can use to predict the condition. So let's predict the condition. I'm going to call the test predictions as Y test predicted and it's equal to LR dot predict X underscore test. Now I'm going to run this one. And what this will do is it will print all the predictions for this particular data set. And now we have both the classes, which is the actual classes and the predicted classes, which is what we will be requiring to build the confusion matrix. Let's start with method one. In method one, we're going to require the model. Remember, we required the model in this method one and along with it, that X and Y test data, which is this one. Now I'm going to plot the confusion matrix with the first method and notice you will see that confusion matrix getting plotted. However, it's going to show a future warning and it says function plot confusion matrix is deprecated in 1.0 and will be removed in 1.2, which means this function or this method is going to be deleted in the future, which is why we will be requiring another way to plot the confusion matrix. So let's look at what the method two is. In the method two, we are going to be requiring two things. One, the confusion matrix and then confusion matrix display. Now what Escalon has done is basically they have divided the confusion matrix into two parts, one which actually create calculates the number and one which plots it or shows it on a chart. So let's do both of them step by step. First of all, let's look at what are the classes within LR. Now, if you look at this logistic regression and you say dot classes, you will see that it will give you an array which is zero and one. Zero, the condition is no disease. One, the condition is a disease. And so for this particular example, we are going to use a confusion matrix. In the confusion matrix, unlike the method one, will require the Y test and the Y test predicted. We also need to give the labels. Right now, we're just going to give the labels that the logistic regression model has with it. However, we can choose to put any other labels within this space. So let's run this one and see what we get. Now, if you run this method, you'll see that we are getting this confusion matrix. However, it's only giving us the numbers, but it's not that fancy which is why we require the next function or method, which is going to be confusion matrix display. Remember zero is equal to no disease. One is equal to disease. And so this time we're going to give all the parameters that the confusion matrix display requires, but change the classes a little bit just to ensure that this, the display looks a lot better. So the confusion matrix display takes the confusion matrix as input. Note that we have used this confusion matrix to get it into a variable called CM. And now we are giving this as an argument to the confusion matrix display. Next, the display labels is something that we can change here. And so I've decided to go with no disease and disease. And note, it should be in the order of how you are seeing the LR dot classes here, right? So that is why no disease and disease is what I have chosen to go with. And now I can finally run this and it should give you the Escalon plot confusion matrix. Notice we take this into the variable and then we say CM display that is confusion matrix display dot plot to plot the confusion matrix. Just to give you a refresher about what this means, the confusion matrix has the actual classes that is the true labels on one side, predicted labels or predicted classes on this side. So this one here is called the true negative. This number is false positive. This one is called the false positive, and this is called the true positive. Initially, you want to begin with looking at the true positive because that's the matter of focus for this particular case. And for your context, it might be different. That's all I have for confusion matrix, guys. So now that you know how to plot a confusion matrix using confusion matrix and confusion matrix display, you have the power to evaluate the performance of your models. Now I'm going to make another video, which is going to show you how to read the confusion matrix do watch out for that. Also, I've made another video where I calculate the confusion matrix on Excel. Do check that out if you want to get a visual idea of how to plot a confusion matrix.